Naomi and Kyle, and together we're going to tell you about some of our key concerns um, uh, from the perspective of the ODSP Action Board. So the recommendations of the Review Commission seem to signal that people on ODSP are seen as doing okay versus people on OW. Um, they needed to support improvements to OW because it's been really so very inadequate for so long. They need to address the 22% cut that Harris made, for example. And many of the recommendations related to people with disabilities seem to be responding to um, what we would describe as a long time agenda of the ministry, and that is to address the growing ODSP caseload, which they think is problematic. Unfortunately, we don't see the Commission challenging the myths about why that caseload is growing uh, or looking at the underlying reasons for that. For example, the more precarious the labor market gets uh, means that fewer people who need disability support at some point can access it through what we call work-triggered programs. So more people are ineligible for things like EI sickness benefits, short-term disability packages, WSIB, and so on. And so where do people end up then? They end up on public disability support, on OBSP. And so the impact of the labor market on people's dwindling access to these other types of support needs to be taken into consideration. And then the fix for ODSP is not going to be found in the targeted reduction of recipients that the commissioners hope will result in savings for the program. They actually use that language of target, a targeted reduction. So we have a lot of concerns about how that would be achieved and whether that's not a positive outcome of a, a, a better program versus a target. So unfortunately, people on ODSP seem largely left out and in many ways would be left worse off by the recommendations of the review. Um, and so we're going to talk to you about just four key areas today. Um, one is adequacy, one is merging OW and ODSP and what we call simplification. Um, the earnings clawback and pathways to employment plans. And so I'm going to talk to you about adequacy. And so unfortunately there's not a lot to say uh, from this commissioner's report for people on ODSP. And we already heard that they want to cut the special diet and take some of the money from special diet and give it to people on OW. But they also talk about a, a shared accommodation rule, where if you're living with somebody, then you would only get 86% 86% of your check. And so we, we don't see very many uh, benefits to this the proposal that they're doing. But they also talk about changes to employment and the clawback and benefits, and also reducing the amount of people who receive on our ESP. Um, the only good thing, the positive note that we can talk about is that they talk about a, a calculation based on the cost of living, which would be good. So they'd be actually looking at maybe an increase in the, the, the amount they pay for rent. Um, but we look at the fact of uh, what is really fair in the labor market. And so we, we really struggle to see that there, there really is any changes for advocacy. So in terms of um, merging OW and ODSP, we have um, we have some serious concerns about the proposal to merge OW and ODSP into one program. Uh, some of this concern comes because OW is in such a dismal state. Why would people on ODSP want to be dumped into a general welfare program that's failing so very obviously to us? The Commission, in their recommendations, has largely signaled that they just don't get what it's like to have a disability. Uh, they're stripping away many of the positive um, types of benefits and policy language that's written into the ODS Act. It doesn't mean it's translated into great things for people, but it's written in there to recognize the unique needs of having a disability. Um, their discussion about special benefits makes it clear they don't recognize the additional costs of having a disability um, or the unique circumstances that require program flexibility to address uh, these issues. Um, the merger is pitched as a way towards a simpler system, but simpler here seems to mean fewer benefits and less income to meet the needs of people with disabilities. So obviously this isn't uh, the version of simple that we want to see. Uh, we agree that you know the punitive nature of the current program and its 800 rules is not effective either. But these proposals, you know, they erode adequacy and then they wipe out the special benefits that were designed to fill all those gaps inadequacy and partially meet the disability-related needs of recipients. So 
We wonder how moving a range of benefits to other ministries, for example, and to municipalities would result in anything simpler to navigate for a recipient. And we're concerned that simplification will look just like what's happened to the community startup and maintenance benefit and the home repairs benefit. Uh, less money, fixed caps or limits versus needs-based funding, where it's flexible based on how a community is doing. Uh, inconsistency and inequity across the province and a loss of appeal rights that um, what we call mandatory benefits uh, include under OW and ODSP. So people have some avenue for fighting for what they believe they're entitled to. So I'm going to talk about uh, the earnings clawback. There's actually a handout if you guys look in your package. There's like some figures on the back. So that's the ODSP actually portion of the fight. So basically, the, the commission uh, proposed that there's a $200 uh, flat rate earnings exemption, which at first glance, one could think, well, we're going to get $200, and it's $100 more than it is now. But then what they also talk about is increasing the tax back rate. So now the clawback rate, would consider, which currently is at 50%, would go up to 57%. And they would also remove the $100 work-related benefits. So right now, if you're working, you get that $100 for working. They want to talk about canceling that program. So if you look at the, the page and you look at the calculation, unless a person's making exactly $200, they're going to make the same. But if they're making less than $200, more than $200, they're actually going to be making, making less than they are currently now. And so that becomes a, a problem because it doesn't really give you an incentive back to work. And I guess the final piece that we're really concerned about is that um, is what we call the, their pathway to employment plans for people with disabilities. So we believe and agree with the commission that people with disabilities should be able to get help from all employment programs and training that people without disabilities get, and also get special disability-related support. That makes sense to us. Um, as well, there should be programs to help people uh, get ready before they're ready to get a job and to help them keep a job once they get one. These are great proposals, great policy and we've always advocated these and believe if, um, if much better training and employment programs were provided, more people would try to work. This, of course, though, needs adequate funding, and this isn't spelled out clearly in the report. The recommendation that all social assistance recipients, including people with disabilities, should be required to get ready to get a job and look for work uh, is highly problematic. Um, they would have to plan, have a plan that's agreed on by their worker that says what they need to do to get a job and what supports will be given to them. Um, but if someone doesn't make a plan or do what they say they'll do to find a job, they could be cut off income support. Um, and they say, however, this new rule with um, forcing people with disabilities to work uh, should not happen right away until there are more supports in place and a new system is set up. But that language is, is small comfort to people who are pretty stressed just going about their daily lives trying to exist on this inadequate system, never mind with this thing hanging over their head about what point is the government going to decide that, okay, now, now your income support is going to be tied to how much you comply with this plan. Um, we've always opposed making people with disabilities look for work in order to get income support. To get disability support in the first place, you have to show uh, that you have a very serious problem and that that makes it very hard for you to work. So the program itself, the eligibility is such that it's, it's not just anyone that qualifies for ODSP. And so one of the criteria is that you're unable to uh, you know, get full-time work and sustain yourself. So kind of strange. Uh, some recipients could work part-time or even full-time if employers really gave them whatever accommodations they need and if there are suitable jobs in their community. So those are two huge ifs. Uh, but that's not the reality today. And until such accessible jobs are ready, readily available, no one should have their income reduced for not following a plan for getting employment. More people with disabilities would love to try to find employment with the right supports if suitable jobs existed and if disability benefits were available again if needed. Um, and more people might also work if allowed to keep more of their earnings. There's no need to punish people or cut off their income, instead providing the help they need and more people would work.